Yeah. Got, <laughs> I have a I have a picture on my phone, and it's you holding that chicken, Chiz in the background, kind of looking sad. But they've changed the chicken's head to Wing's face when he's like straining to do that 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 like workout. <laughs> the push and he's like, yeah, I mean, and he's oh, making that face, <laughs> and it never fails to get a laugh. I send it to people. <laughs> I send it to people like every three months. I send it to just various people who all know the show and wings and stuff. Never fails. They never go, oh, you already sent me that. They go, ha, 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 ha. Every time it never fails to get a laugh. It's brilliant. To I, defend myself to for just a moment, Kyle wisely held a stick next to it. He held the bird down and he put a stick next to his hand so that I wouldn't chop his hand. No knack against that, but it made the sweet spot I had to hit like half an inch almost, and I didn't hit yeah. it every time. It was I, it was a tough shot. I can cut I a chicken head sh- off the way you cut fudge. Just put it there and. Yeah, I think you you'd never cut a chicken's head off. That was the yeah, thing that I underestimated. It's a talent that I have because like I've cut thousands and thousands of chickens' heads off. Literally, not not, a, not an exaggeration at all. And I know exactly what it takes to take a chicken's head off. And for some reason, I thought that you had that skill or that knowledge. And you'd just be like, pop, because that's all it would have taken. But instead, it was it was a little gruesome. I hit it and... on the shoulder a little bit. <laughs> and because and, I hit it on the shoulder where it was stronger. So funny. <laughs> you guys made it your pet for a few days, and you gave it the most horrifying <laughs> checkout possible. The, uh, all right, we're just going to drown it alive. <laughs> imagine yourself with a machete in the hand aiming at a, a dot on it, on it like a fallen tree. Yeah. You could miss it by half an inch. And that's like Absolutely. literally what I missed. If I, and by the way, if I miss like half an inch to the right, then Kyle's in danger. If I miss half an inch to the left, I'm sort of on the shoulder. What and that was my, where off. I wanted my we'd be having a To defend Woody here, if he'd cut one of my fingers off, oh, we'd be having gosh. an entirely different discussion these days. Yeah. We'd be like, yeah. And then he just, <laughs> and Woody's like, well, I want it to be a clean kill. Well, it was. It was, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> You know how bad I am at, at PC gaming now? I cannot use the control button. I can't <laughs> run. Yeah. I can't even control. It'd be funny if you took an even more gruesome thing where it's like, all right, we're going to put Henrietta down. You get a little washcloth and lay it over her face and then just a jug of water. As, <laughs> <laughs> just another 15, 20 minutes, Henrietta. This will all be over. <laughs> we waterboarded it down. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but the, my inaccuracy was partly related to like you know the risk is either it takes a couple swats or Kyle loses a finger and I erred towards the the other. Yeah, that yeah, was the correct I, error. Yeah. I, I suppose so. I, I should have just killed the chicken. Um, yeah, in hindsight, we should have changed jobs. I should have held the bird, and you should have chopped its neck. I could have done both the jobs. I should have just done it. I, I, I like you had that thing where you were like, ah, I've only ever killed a squirrel oh, and that was a right. pity you were like that was a pity kill i want to kill a thing and and you know i've killed all kinds of things I've, i hunted my entire childhood and like i've i've killed thousands and thousands of like small animals i'm not not to sound like uh, like a like a like a complete monster or anything but i have you know and not all like, of them were just for fun no not all of them were just for fun I, you know i like like if we needed a, 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 a if we if we had a cow that was like lame and needed a mercy killing that's my job you know, uh, if if like uh, I was an incredible bird hunter, like like when we would go dove hunting, there would be complaints. They'd be that you would hear the other hunters yell, "Hey, let some through!" Because <laughs> I I would literally because you know I, I was practicing every day, all day, thousands of shots a day, and I was so good that I, I wouldn't miss a bird. And so I've killed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of birds. And then how did you put down the cows? Did you have one of those like? No country no. for old men. I guess? Anton Sugar shotgun things. and slug. Uh, it was different things every time. Mm. Uh, before I made videos, we didn't keep a lot of ammunition on hand. Like 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 hunting season, we go buy a few boxes of ammo. And my dad and I are both excellent shots. So two boxes of ammo gets you through a whole hunting season. You don't put that so chicken long. head in your pocket. <laughs> um, just another chicken head. <laughs> <laughs> okay anton so like oftentimes a cow would come up lame and it would be like this cow is not getting better the vet came it gave it medicines it's still lame it's 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 gonna die a painful death coyotes will come sometimes and they'll like pull a cow's asshole out when it's alive and essentially disembowel it if it can't get up and defend itself it's a horrible thing so you you got to mercy kill these animals when they get down and they're lame or they're just dying a painful death so it was different things. Like it depended what I had. One time, stuck a twenty-two pistol in its ear and emptied it. You know, emptied it. Fire. So it took a 
Well, I didn't. I didn't want to know if know. I didn't want to yeah. know if one was enough. You know, you I didn't want to like apply one bullet and be like, "Did that do it? How you feeling now?" <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if I want to spend sixteen cents on your mirth. Yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> I yeah, want to so, be merciful, so, but let's not be silly. So just <laughs> bop, 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 like in its ear, mm. um, and and I that's a super quick death. Another time, uh, I, I I had a uh, an old British three hundred three. Uh, like World War II rifle. That's all I could find bullets for. What was it called? And <laughs> it an infield. In I want to say. I think it's an infield bush rifle. Uh, it's the the short the I've short barrel. I don't know it. Yeah. It's a it's a big fat thirty caliber bullet, nice and slow, but it would just cream a human being if you hit them with it. That's what it was made for. Um, and I had like two bullets for the thing, and the cow could still walk, but but it was just fucked. It wasn't going to. It was going to die a real slow, painful death over the next two weeks or something like I that. I thought you meant after you shot it. Well, I used two bullets. No. You could still walk, but I'm sure it eventually died. <laughs> no, I always did an excellent job because I don't want anything to suffer. But but like I was trying to get her to stop and like, like come on, girl, just sit still so I can shoot you like, you know, here between mm. the eyes. And, and she's just moving around and actually running from me. And finally, I just like shoulder the gun and like just used a little bit of instinct and just went bam and made a perfect shot and like basically blew the top of its head off and it just instantly dies. Another time, my dad was like, Kyle, I got a cow out there that's down and she can't get up. I was like, ah, oh, man, which one? He's like, oh, it's that red one with the with the crooked horn. She's she's down. Oh, that sucks. And I need to go put her down? He's like, yeah, if you would. I I, I hate to do it. And I was like, all right, I'll do it. All right. He's, I was like, what gun should I use? He's like, hey, take, my, take my 270 hunting rifle. Take that. And I was like, all right, all right. So I, I go out in the field and <clears throat> I find her and there she is and she's standing over there and kind of looking at me and she's not really moving and I kind of pull the truck sideways and I, I prop up very carefully aiming out the, the driver's side window and turn the truck off so there's no vibration and I put it right kind of here side of her head and just squeeze, 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 squeeze and <laughs> hit her right in the head from about 100 yards and she just dropped. She's instantaneously dead. She didn't feel a thing. And I felt good about that. You know, you, I, again, I, I hate seeing animals suffer. And I get back home. And I'm like, he's like, Did, I heard you shoot. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I mean, she's, uh, I, she's back there in the back pasture. She was, uh, she was just standing there. And uh, he's like, wait, standing. She was standing up. I was like, <laughs> well, well, yeah, she was standing there. And I, I, I shot her. And, that was the whole reason I wanted you to kill her. She couldn't get up. <laughs> she couldn't get up. You're telling me she got up and then you killed her? And I'm like, you told me to kill her. <laughs> you sent me on a search and destroy. I wasn't, you didn't say if she was like this, do that. If she was like this, do this. Like, you said go kill, so I killed. He's like a contract <laughs> killer for the mob. Like, you know, yeah. oh, we're going to call off the hit. Sorry, we don't do call offs. Why? Yeah. It's essential yeah. to this movie's plot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we did, this movie would be a quick. Uh, if we just wired you back the money for full refund, if we had a 30 day return policy, <laughs> this would be a shit movie. <laughs> like you gotta, so you I were like, just like Blackwater out there, just a contracted killer. You I don't killed, care their feelings or anything. As I soon as wanna... they stand up, she's like, no, I'm going to survive. <laughs> Where are my kids? <laughs> and then just boom. I, I think, I think those are the three instances total that I had done that. I, I think I've only shot three cows um, and killed them anyway on purpose. Um, you've accidentally shot a couple of cows. Uh, no, I've shot them on purpose to wound them before. What, what for? Uh, if they, if they get out of the fencing and they go off and like go on someone else's property and trespass, you can hurry them along with a bit of bird shot in the ass from like 60, 70 yards and their skin is leather. So it's like getting slapped in the ass real hard for them. They're fine. You're ruining uh, the leather though. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not a. Yeah, it's all fun and games man. until the change falls out of my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but 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 what there's I'm a saying, BB I, in my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I've killed a lot of fucking animals. So like, I, I remember that was part. Also, I think I was more motivated to kill her than anyone else. Everyone else had made friends with Henrietta, whereas I was just hungry. Yeah, I, I didn't remember. Like, I, I didn't want to kill it. Like, I never shot cows or anything on my my grandparents' farm. But I remember we were out at one of their ponds on their property and we were fishing and these turtles were an enormous nuisance. They were like eating all the food that my grandpa was trying to get the fish big on and stuff. And I remember him being like, 
Tyler, you see one of those, you let me know. We're going to kill it. And I was like, you know, maybe seven or something. I'm like, oh, cool. Like, we're going to kill this nuisance turtle. And I had this little pocket knife. And one of them, you know, we caught one. And he was like, you want to kill it, Tyler? And I was like, yeah. I didn't know. And so, like, like thinking that turtles have, like, an infinitely protective shell, I was like, I wonder how, how, how much my knife will just glance off the side of this armor. And I just went like, ah! and like right down in the middle of its back, straight through straight like through. it was butter. And yep. it just it made like a, ah! <laughs> like a little <laughs> noise. And I was so scared that it didn't die right yeah. away. It died very, like almost like two seconds afterward. But that, that scared me as a kid. I think my grandpa was getting a kick out of watching me get freaked out by it because he's really good at making stuff with clay and like Play-Doh. And when I was like four, my grandpa's a big guy, big farmer, tough guy kind of kind of dude. And he like made this little little duck out of yellow play-doh. And he like he's really, really nice. He worked on it for a while and I was over there looking, and I'd go back and play with Lincoln Logs or whatever the fuck. And he was fine. I was like, Tyler, get over here. And I was like, I was like, look at this. I like sat up there at the table and it was this little uh little yellow duck made out of play-doh. A lot of detail. And he's like, look at that. Look at look at how detailed that duck is. Look, it looks like a real thing, doesn't it? And I was like, yeah, it looks like the real thing. And I like got close looking at it. You know, he's out of frame now. And I just remember this massive farmer hand coming down and him going, quack, <laughs> as he smashed it into the table. And it scared me so much I cried because he smashed it so loudly in front of me. Have you ever done something like that in front of a kid? Just a violent... <laughs> Like, no, angry thing. like that, no, no, that you don't think is violent. Like if you accidentally drop a ladder or, or tip something over and okay. like just the amount of noise can stress a kid out. I was, I was distraught. I still remember that. I remember being upset for a while that he crushed that, that bird. Anyway, that's not funny. I'm just wasting time. I that's have a crazy I, I, on a different topic. I haven't played apex legends yet. Kyle, do I have the name yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. But I've watched a lot of it. Like, probably more than you're guessing. 12 hours, 15 My brother I opted for the shark in a jar. Mm. And it's like a little shark fetus. Or it's like, yeah, I guess a shark fetus. Uh, they, they give sharks abortions, I guess. And uh, it's in blue, suspended in blue liquid in a glass tube. And uh, we had it for years because it was supposed to last forever. And then <laughs> one day, like, he was in the bathroom and he got it up his head of, like, Wow, the bottom of this unscrews. <laughs> <laughs> he went in there and unscrewed it and like poured some of the blue liquid into the sink to drain it. And then the whole shark just like fell out. And it's only like that big, maybe, but it's still a dead shark. And it, it's no, the kind it's of smell, fetus. the kind of smell that does not go away, <laughs> even when all physical remnants have been burned. <laughs> like it is, it's thick in the air. It must have stuck to like wall it permeates the paint in the wall it is so if you guys are 11 you shouldn't be listening to this show but <laughs> you just get the big dog shirts mm. don't listen to them kids you'll learn yeah. a thing or two around Dude, here i so i grew up a few blocks from the boardwalk those big dog shirts like were my teenage years i didn't own any i don't think but we just go and read them all like you know the big dogs apparently they dominate like the porch and this the beach and this <laughs> and that. The other was the uh, you know electricians do it with power. You know pavers do it with accountants do it with numbers. There's probably efficiency. No yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> They're just uh, all the do it with uh, options were fun too. I worry yeah. about that too. And there's like weird Still. stop signs people throw up. Like oh yeah, you do that all of a sudden. Your metabolism is going to drop. You go into survival mode. And then when you, you know, do we go back into your normal eating, suddenly you're getting, your metabolism will be dirt slow. You'll gain it all back instantly. It'll be a waste. I don't believe I've anything. I've heard that survival mode thing says, is a myth. Yeah, like, I don't believe it's like anything. you don't get to survival mode until like an enormous amount of your bodily fat storages have already been depleted. Yeah, I, it's just not what I've experienced in my own, like personally experimenting with my body kind of like experience. Like, like when I went to jail, I talked about it the other day. Like I didn't eat for days. Like days went by. I could do that with pooping a while back. I didn't poop either. I didn't poop for days because I wasn't eating for makes days. Sense. You know, like, like you didn't like, go in there with anything in the chamber. Like, <laughs> no, I, I, <laughs> no, I, I, I think that I might go to jail tomorrow. Let's save off on. This he day. kept that loaded for <laughs> in case of an yeah. <laughs> Like a, you know how a squid will shoot die everywhere <laughs> <laughs> when it needs to make a quick get away. <laughs> Let me tell you my plan. 
<laughs> I've been eating nothing but cabbage and chocolate milkshake for the last <laughs> eight days. <laughs> nothing but boiled eggs. <laughs> so, so yeah, like, 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 all I was eating was like, like breakfast would come and I'd go like a bite, and then lunch would come and it was like a bite, like, like literally, like because it was so bad and it was so lame, and and I wasn't doing anything that like I lost so much weight in like a couple days, like, like. Literally like three days and I lost like 15 pounds or something. Taylor, like, resting metabolism, about 2,100 a day-ish? Depends, depends your size and how much muscle mass you have. Uh, the more muscle mass you have, the more you can afford, which really? is like one of the big reasons to put on muscle because it buys snackage. But yeah. Uh, yeah, So for guys, it's about 2,000-ish and for girls, it's about 1,400-ish. I think my around that probably a little higher than fourteen, probably like fifteen, sixteen hundred. Like I think my basal metabolic rate is at like twenty two fifty. Wings is like, maybe. wings. We did wings once, and I want to say it was like thirty five to thirty seven hundred, something like that. And and I felt like oh, mine, mine is always not that high then. Mine usually comes in at like twenty three hundred or something like that when I just do the basic calculations. Yeah, um, and this is not scientific. It's just like go into yeah, the it, it's it's just to it round in. it off, like like sort of get a general idea you're never going to know until you get in one of those like water tanks that like takes into account things like bone density and all that stuff and you actually get a an accurate body fat percentage um you're, you're never going to know until you literally get into that because those like fat calipers and stuff like that like you're, you're never getting an accurate body fat percentage oh uh, where is he uh oh oh he must have fallen on the ground uh, he's dead though I would wager. He <laughs> crawled on my ankle a couple times, so I didn't care for that. Do you feel like a bitch when that happens? When like a little bug will crawl on you unexpectedly and you'll be like, oh! I, you know, my bitchiest moments are when I'm chasing like a mouse or a rat and I'm at full brave like on the attack and then he comes towards me and I go to full retreat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my war. That's my shame. <laughs> I've never how... had that happen, but I can imagine being like, the big man in the garage with like my broom and like on the aggressive and then it just hightails it and suddenly I'm like, oh, <laughs> what do I do? Is it going to climb up my leg and give me rabies? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> have you ever done that, Kyle? Like, do you, have you ever freaked out about a bug on you or something? Like knowing probably it's fine, but it's just unexpected. Um, I just smushed them. Like, 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 kind of, like, like, I would never touch them if I just saw them. But if it's on me, I'll just kind of go into caveman mode and just be like, smush, like, like, right onto my chest. That's happened before, where like a spider was in bed on my chest, like a pretty, fairly big one, and I was shirtless, and I just felt it and looked down at like my, my collarbone, and he was there, and I just smush, motherfucker. Oh, that's the the, the worst and, bug experience I had was, uh, you know, cicadas. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I don't know how big they are everywhere. We all live in pretty. Like green, I just mean like big is like a phenomenon. Like oh, it's phenomenon. a huge phenomenon. Like phenomenon. It, if you live in one of the states like Midwest or South where there's a ton of greenery everywhere, there's a fuck ton of these things. And there are these bugs that come out like every 17 years or something. Yep. Then there's these other kinds that come out like every nine years. Like there's a couple of different kinds. Yeah. But when I was little, like one of the 17 year booms happened and we had a giant ass willow tree in our backyard. And it was like, it, it's, it's alive. 24 7 it's just a sound you get used to in the summer just yeah <clears throat> like not not strange. like it's loud as fuck and that willow tree must have had a couple million in it like th th it's insane and me and my brother were fooling around and in the backyard once just like wearing you know probably just like shorts and no shirt yeah we weren't wearing shirts just running around in the sun and we got a hose with like the gun attachment that you can spray out there and we were like, oh, you know, it'd be really fun if we sprayed the willow tree and, and get the cicadas wet and see what they do. And so like, we went over there and we like and started spraying water into it. And after the, like five seconds of that is nothing like a little. But we did it more spraying it into the willow tree and like. Almost like the tree was growing. There's just like a cloud of like black <laughs> bugs that come out of it, and they start a frenzy, filling up our entire yard. They they were they're like running into you and like hitting you all over. I remember like telling my brother to go back inside, and I like open my mouth to like tell him to go, and one of them landed on my lip, and I went, <laughs> <laughs> started doing that. One of them landed in my belly button and like crawled in a little bit, and I'd like pinch and pull it out. It was 
I still hate cicadas. It freaked me out. Yeah. So I swear, I got inside and I found like four more on me just because they have little hook claws. They just yeah, stick they're awful. in your fucking I clothes. Was, they are evil little bugs and I hate them. I was in Tennessee like one year that they were just awful. It was like 2011, maybe. I don't know. You, you probably look at, look at a calendar and see like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, that was the, the year of the cicada. But there was, it was just screeching. Like you heard, like a continuous, like a train screaming noise in the background and we set off this fucking enormous explosion in this valley and it went quiet like the the shock wave or the explosion or whatever they just they, they stopped for like a solid like two seconds and it, it was like oh this is what silence sounds like and then it just yeah. comes back like loud again i don't know why my camera's frozen um, oh you I knew it though you could see it too Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just frozen. There. I was thinking it was kind of funny at first, and I should just like not say anything, and I could just like, I could just like go like, like watch a movie or something. Like nobody would even know I'd left. <laughs> like Kyle was pretty quiet there for a while. He just sat there and stared. So what do you guys I hear, think? It's always sunny in the background, though. <laughs> I feel like altogether Discord's been an improvement, right? Oh yeah, hundred percent. A hundred percent. It's been an enormous improvement. I think everybody, all the listeners and viewers agree. Yeah, it, but it is trading for a different set of issues. Like the cameras didn't really freeze in Skype, but... Mine did on Skype. Oh. I'd way rather have issues with video than audio. I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, sometimes most like, people just listen to it Skype anyway. would go robot -y, whereas uh, Discord's more inclined to just cut off. But yeah, I think overall uh, it's better. Are you drinking wine? No. It looked, no. it looked purple. Jesus, I, Taylor, like, what's glass. wrong with you? What kind of accusations are you throwing around? You're oh, right. I, I was foolish. <laughs> I only drink Tito's vodka. Uh, they, they should absolutely sponsor me. Just me. Not the rest of you. Not the rest of you. Just, just me. I'm really I'm not pulling my weight in that sponsorship. I, I, I'm, I'm the one over here putting, putting it back. Uh, God, I love Tito's vodka. It is some tasty fucking shit. I've got to the point where it just tastes good. It just tastes good now. I barely chase it. I just get a little, little sip of apple juice. Isn't that know? bad? Isn't what bad? To enjoy the taste of alcohol? I don't, look, look, all right, oh, so nice. let me just preface this before Kyle answers. I come from a non-supportive alcohol environment. I feel like I know less and I have less experience. Mm -hmm. I'm told that when you really, when you taste something like vodka and say, ah, you know, that's a beauty, that this is what I've been thirsting for, that that's a sign that you should stop drinking vodka. Am I crazy? Because I might be. I don't really. Yeah, you absolutely are. Um, that, that, that's that, that's that's silly. That's just like your opinion that like women who drink beer are somehow not classy. No, no, that's my parents' opinion. My mom, my dad's uh, okay. opinion. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I uh, I don't drink every day. I drink probably three days a week or something like that. I always drink during the show because I, I think it loosens me up nice and nice and fun. And uh, I have probably what the what's the equivalent of like five shots at a time, and then I don't drink anymore. There are people who like drink and then they drink more and they drink more and they drink more like all through the night. I don't do that. I, okay. I, have, I have about five shots of vodka at once. That gets me to like 70% drunk. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I'm nice and loosey goosey and I have a, have a, have a lovely time. What's and, damn? Uh, what, what, like I, expound you're on definitely that. more than 70% drunk after five shots all at once. No, I, I, I've had five shots right now. Oh, all right. Well, touche then to me. Touche me. Yeah, touche. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but uh, like, yeah, t enjoying the taste of alcohol, nothing wrong with that. Like, like I've never enjoyed the taste of vodka, really. It just kind of tastes like cold burning. Like, yeah, for the most now, part. to be but, fair. Like, if you like, enjoy like scotch, like I've had scotch before, and oh. I'm not even an aficionado. I don't know. But mm -hmm. I'll have like a little sip. Like you drink it little sips at a time, and I'll have it. And it's like, Dude. I kind of like this. Like it's it's neat. It's like a warming like feeling kitty like had, i like that warmth down your chest and then you, you got a bunch of like interesting flavors in your mouth kitty has a bottle of uh glen 12 yeah, or something like one. that which i think is a pretty popular scotch and uh we were eating some uh some greek food the other day and i was like ah i'm gonna have a little glass of this glen and be like an adult over here i'm gonna i'm gonna shoot back a few of these glen is it, a scotch yeah yeah okay. it was so fucking gross it was so fucking gross. I chased it with Coca Cola because, like, that's all I had. And as a true <laughs> aficionado, <laughs> dude, I chased it with some Briar's ice cream because it was nearby. <laughs> it would have been better. I, I, I would have. Like, I'm not above that. Like, like, uh -huh. like, I'm, I'm certainly not one of these people who's like pinky up in the air about like different kinds of alcohol or anything like that. When I say I like the taste of Tito's, what I mean is like 
it doesn't burn and it doesn't taste gross and it doesn't remind me of rubbing alcohol. And those are all positive traits when it comes to booze, if you ask me. Um, Glenfinch was disgusting. I didn't gag, but if I'd really thought about it, I'd have gagged. Like, like you, you know, sometimes like, like maybe you're emptying like a, like rotten leftovers into the garbage or like, mm-hmm. or, or like maybe you're scraping dog shit off your shoe and you're like, if I really focused in on what I'm doing right now and didn't like just put my mind somewhere else, this would make me gag. That's what drinking Glenn Fittich was, was like for me. And I feel like someone with a drinking problem or, or something <laughs> like that would be like, scotch, scotch, scotch. I love scotch. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you just had one of those and said that's repulsive. Oh no! I, I I wanted to get a little buzz on before I ate my Greek food, so I, I muscled down three nice uh, three nice belts of that stuff. You know, What's a I, I is could, a belt a shot? I don't know what a belt is. For oh. me, a belt is when I fill up a glass like this up to like right about two here. fingers or something. It seems yeah, like yeah, two shots yeah. maybe. Yeah, I I don't Ish. I don't measure alcohol. Um, I I just I I pour the the amount that looks right to me and I, and I drink it. You just pour it is, and then you count the liquid as it goes in. Is not yeah. measuring cool or like. I, I, I'm not I don't think it's cool, cool or anything. Cool. It's just yeah, you, you just don't. Their okay, own. all right. I like guess. sometimes if I'm making like a vodka water or something, like I don't really a skinny I'm, bitch. I'm not like sitting. Well, I, vodka like, water is a drink. Me hydrated, yeah, like vodka water, and so I'll put like I'll maybe like sparkling water or something. If I'm making yeah, that's one called of those, a skinny bitch. I just like yeah, it's probably called a skinny bitch because I'm a, I'm not skinny, but I am a bitch. That's what and it's called. Like I wouldn't like pour it into a shot glass and empty it. You just kind of kind of eyeball it. You know when's too much. So. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I've grown up around people who, who drink, uh, not a lot, but you know, they would have three or four beers at a time and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So I've never thought anything of drinking alcohol of it as being a bad thing or anything. I had a girlfriend once who was like, I think I've got a drinking problem. I drink every night. I, I you know, I don't feel like I can have fun unless I'm drinking. You know, I drink for this, I drink for that, I drink for, you know, if I'm going to eat, I drink. If I'm going to go party, I drink. If I'm going to watch a movie, I drink. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I guess you, you do drink a lot. You're drinking a lot of those those fucking vodka tonics with the lime on the side, you know, and... Is she still in your universe? No. Was she thin? Yeah. Okay. Because at, at the time, probably a, a not lot anymore. Of the, a lot of times people I know who, are, who drink way too much, like they, they're converting that to body fat. Uh, ah, yeah. well, you know, like, like, like girls had, she knew, she, she, she took care of herself. She was a I mean, proper she, bulimic. <laughs> she did yoga and she ran marathons. So like oh, she was, well, she wasn't, yeah, she wasn't going to not marathon, mar- half marathons. I should have five K's and half marathons and shit like that. And she, uh, and she did yoga every day. And so she was, she was pretty fit. Yeah. I'd huh. say. Well, yeah, then yeah if, if she was feeling like she can't have any fun without drinking, that's a pretty big red flag. So I, yeah, she stopped drinking for like you know, six months. And then like after six months, she felt like she had like mastered her domain and then she would have one drink or two drinks, but, but you know, she, she slowed down. That's good. <clears throat> yeah. I think my alarm bells go off way before most people's alarm bells go off. Right. You know, I, I see someone, I don't know, drink at home with a movie and I'm like, what the heck? You're not with other people. Right. And, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm saying my alarm bells go off way earlier yeah. than other people. And it depends how you would do that, too. Like, if you're sitting there watching a movie and, like, you're just getting tanked, <laughs> like, obliterated drunk, then, yeah, that's that's probably not ideal if you're doing that all the time. But if all you just, my like, favorite one of few movie beers, heroes drink a ton, okay? I've been rewatching The Wire, and I've, I model my drinking after McNulty's, okay? You know, he come. He goes into work, has a few drinks, he works some more, he drinks some more. Then he gets off work and he has, you know, 10, 20 shots, something like that. And then he goes and he pisses it out there by the train tracks and he starts another day. I would, I try to model my drinking after Don Draper, the oh. coolest alcoholic on TV. That guy was suave, right? Very suave. Just, because like, he has like, the body of someone who in real life takes care of themselves and is fit, but his character is an alcohol-driven fiend. And so people can look at that and be like, that's what it was really like back in the day when really that guy drinking like that was a big, fat, fucking bald, like, lump. Smelly guy. Yeah, yeah smelly absolutely. piece of his shit. His suits are all wrinkled and shit. Like, like he's, he's, he's sweaty sleeping. all the time. Yeah, his wife's already left him. My yeah. reference is way too old. I was going to claim my model myself after Spuds McKenzie, the dog who got all the girls. 
in the beer commercials, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure you guys never saw 90s beer commercials with dogs in them. I, I did not ever see Spuds McKenzie. <laughs> well, Spuds McKenzie was the party animal. He was a Budweiser mascot, <laughs> and there were women just loving to like pet him and give him attention, and uh, it would be funny to model stuff after a dog if you got the reference. So this is a bone-in ribeye. It weighs... Oh my god. <laughs> 2.8 Eight two pounds. Wow, which he had previously described as two. <laughs> yeah, he bought you bought two of these, didn't you? I got two of them. Wow, Hell that is yeah. a big chunk of meat. Like, just want to take like, a bite. Nah. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. like, like my hand for comparison. It's as thick as all four of my fingers easily. It's insane. It's heavy. I got two point eight two pounds. It's <laughs> it's. <laughs> It's. I got it. He cut it fresh. I, I had him like special cut this thing. Look today. at that. Look at that um, richness. All that hemoglobin or whatever's still in there. Yeah. It's. Uh. I'm very excited to cook these up tomorrow. Uh, now, I, like I said, I got two of them. You were telling. So I'm not a. Not everyone knows. I'm like the opposite of a chef. But there's a special way to cook meat of this size. Mm hmm. So I sous vide uh, most of my steaks now and all of my fish. Uh, it's, it's essentially, uh, I think sous vide is French for vacuum, uh, vacuum seal or vacuum lock or something like that. In, essentially what you do is you've got this device that keeps a vessel of water at a precise temperature. So you put that device on a big vessel of water. I'm going to just use a gigantic pot of water I've got and you set it to the perfect internal temperature for a medium rare steak, which off the top of my head is like 132 degrees. I'm not sure I'll. I'll Google it again before I cook tomorrow. And you throw it in there for a few hours. You, if it's a, if it's like a filet mignon, like an hour, hour and twenty minutes. But for this, I'm probably gonna try to just go three hours to make sure I get it cooked well. And then you sear the outside, and you're done with and a blowtorch. Yeah, is it literally a like a propane blowtorch that you also use for plumbing? <clears throat> yeah, but it's got this attachment on the front that's made for like searing beef. That's this big wide kind of thing. Oh. Uh, there's what a YouTube it is, channel. Propane? Propane, <laughs> propane is it propane? Is <laughs> it the same the meat, propane tank plane. that we're yeah. all um, familiar with? Uh, I would imagine yeah. so, right? Yeah. So it's if you've ever watched, uh, there's a YouTube channel called Sous Vide Everything, and that's what these guys do. They just sous vide everything. What are these fruits or vegetables? Sometimes, yeah. How Sometimes, much ammo not, not can that, that channel have in the <laughs> magazine? Where it's like, well, you've boiled eggs the normal way, but have you done it in a bag? <laughs> <laughs> they they do all kinds of stuff. They do um that the, you know they do all kinds of like blind taste tests with like different cuts of meat and different quality of meat, um and uh, like like all of the meats you can imagine. And you can do side items sous vide style as well. You just you can put like potatoes and butter and salt and pepper in a bag and throw it in this pot, and then in an hour you just take the bag and mush it a little, and you've got like perfect potatoes or whatever. Like you can do that with carrots, and you can do it with anything. You make you can make really good soft boiled eggs. Uh, it's it's a hundred dollar uh, kitchen item that that does a lot of really cool stuff. I'm gonna put this steak back. Yeah, that makes sense. Probably yeah, let I, it marinate on my desk. I don't have a sous vide, <laughs> but he's selling me on it. I mean, no, you probably don't want one for sure. But uh, bring well, it up to no. Jackie. Maybe she'll want one. No, yeah, that's the take on this. I, I like, do I want one? The real question is, do I want Jackie to use one? She has. She made me a steak for my birthday. My birthday was just uh, this week. And um, happy thank you. What did you say? When is it? It was Tuesday. No, I said happy birthday. Oh, oh yeah. So, uh, uh, and the steak was perfect. So now I'm like, do you want to mess with that? Do you want to? You want her to like learn to sous vide while I have like nine bad steaks? I don't know. That's true. Yeah, you don't need to change a good thing. <clears throat> that's in that's in Leviticus. Kyle, <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea if that's true <laughs> or not. But that's my problem. Like, every once in a while, the like, I don't know the. Ex the existence of God will come up or something. And it's like, yeah, I'm really not educated enough to win a debate on this. Yeah, like, no, there's a lot of biblical knowledge. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy 23, uh, 14. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> Deuteronomy, that's the, uh, that's the most popular song on YouTube. If you can't run with the big dogs, get off YouTube. the porch. 
Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that that clothing brand that was like Big Dog big back yeah, in the day? Yeah. Yeah. Like just a picture of like a pug sitting there, and it's like if you can't run with the big dogs, <clears throat> get off the porch. Oh, and I, was, I remember being like ten years old in like some surf shop in Florida. We were walking mm-hmm. around getting some stupid ass souvenirs, and I just was looking at those, and I was like, this is what I want for my souvenir. <laughs> and they're like, you sure you don't want like a Frisbee or like a shark in a jar? Because, you know, you've seen those. I'm sure like the uh-huh, sharks uh-huh, in a yeah. jar. And I was like, nah, I want like three big dog shirts. <laughs> so I had some cool ass big dog shirts. There was one where and they're like all fit. sitting around a table playing poker, except they were sassy and giving a look of like, you're not welcome here, dick. Like, <laughs> right, it was game. way more aggressive. I liked those. Wow. After, yeah. after a certain weight, you just aren't a person anymore. No, I agree. Like you have no lose... your your physical attributes don't even resemble the movement of a human being. Like I, I agree. Like if aliens came down, they would they would be like, and what is that species? Yeah. <laughs> is is that one of your water creatures? How could it live <laughs> with your great <laughs> is that one of your water creatures? Why, why do you make this water creature live amongst you? Shouldn't it be put back in the ocean with the manatee and the other marine mammals? Why does it smell different than the rest of you humans? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. sighs> On my planet, we have a beast like this. It lives. It lives deep in the oceans. <laughs> the only, oh, you like, know what I heard? Busted. On a re- the blue whale that we have now, I th- saw on a YouTube video. So it's true. Is the largest animal that's ever existed on Earth? You're right. Yep. Yeah, it's the largest there has ever been. The blue yeah. whale. The, Which yeah. is pretty cool. You know that giant, like, aggressive whale thing you see in Jurassic Park that, like, eats the... T- that wasn't actually that big. Turns out Jurassic Park, somewhat inaccurate. That's true. I Do they even know the damage they're doing <laughs> by, by promoting yeah. this? I, I thought they're going to was... make all these kids want to become paleontologists. They're going to study all their life, and then they're going to realize it's really, 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 really dumb. <laughs> yeah, I did a I did a science project on the blue whale when I was in I don't know fourth or fifth grade or something like that. So I, I knew. So you know so your you shit. You knew that I didn't. I, I know it is big. Long. It is blue. It it's seems like whenever I look back long, in time, you know? they're like, "Yeah, we have tigers now. Tigers are totally badass, but they're actually complete pussies compared to prehistoric tigers. We have elephants now. The elephants are actually pretty cool, but they're absolutely pussies compared to the old school like woolly mammoths. Everything we have now seems like a lame." stupid version of what we used to have except blue whales and us yeah they're they weigh three hundred thousand pounds yeah to yeah. put that in perspective a whale shark weighs forty thousand pounds and to put so, that in and to put that in perspective this fat whore here weighs <laughs> one thousand pounds. that's true if you take the front page of dying to be fat and aggregate it You've got 1.7 blue whales. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> no, that is true. That uh, some of these are scale pictures. I like the one. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I can't stop looking. Six hundred or four hundred, whatever. 1.7. <laughs> it, it'd take like about the the ultimate wake up call. The ultimate wake up call for these fat fucks has to be when they install like the Olympic ring thing that looks like the thing you hold onto when you're water skiing, and you have to grab onto that to pull yourself up. What? How do you continue to eat after that's installed? Sorry, I'm bringing it back to the fat people. You know it's one of my favorites. I feel like it's mean. It's just horrible. It's so mean, Taylor. These are but people these people with... are doing it to themselves for They're the purpose sick. of being like a fetish. They're sick, but like if people like me aren't brave enough <laughs> to go after these hard targets, then who will? They are the softest of targets, literally and figuratively. Not their arteries. No, fair counterpoint. <laughs> <laughs> you got me there. Got arteries like fucking old bathroom <sighs> tile. Just sh- can shatter any moment. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, big fat fucking monster. We can move on. But this one does look like Arya. Um, I had something here. Let's Good see. Back. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, I've got something about Wisconsin high school cheerleaders receive awards for biggest butt and breasts at a banquet. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had the same reaction. I thought, isn't that normal? Like so they you, had like uh, like for our our teams in high school, we'd have penis inspection day, and then you'd give do, out the trophy at do, the do, end do, to per, the person with the best foreskin, do, the person with the best circumcision. Do you have a link to this? And are there images? No. This sounds glo- <sighs> there are no images. 
Well, that's not. I just read all these. I just read the headline and then just and just make up whatever I think the article will be. Who won? That's what I want to know. Wisconsin high school has reportedly school. come under fire for a cheerleading award ceremony last year that saw some of the teens win accolades such as biggest boobies and biggest booty awards. Appalled, parents called the American Civil Liberties Union on Tuesday. The group sent a warning to Kenosha Unified School District that it might file a lawsuit over the high school's mock award ceremony. And what, some, what's wrong with this? Like it looks uh, like it's a here's jokey what a parent thing. said. I looked around and thought, did that just happen? If my daughter would have won one of those awards, I would I would have absolutely been rushing the stage. It was just so wrong in so many ways. One mother told the newspaper, "Fuck you." <laughs> Fuck you. Let's see them big tittied high school girls. That's what I'm talking about. I need to find like uh, some Instagram posts or something from this because there's nothing I like better than a freakishly big titted lady. Okay. Especially when they're nice and young like that. Okay. And, and gravity hasn't even begun to take its toll and it will. It will. These ladies have like <laughs> one year of prime time when they've got like those big, like, 36 triple D's and clocks and, and ticking immediately. It, 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 you ever see 60 minutes and it's like on this episode, it's like tick, 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 yeah. tick, tick, tick. That's how much time you got left on those titties before they melt. Okay. Same thing, but uh, to some extent with asses. Okay. You, it takes, it takes a lot to keep well, that but ass. The difference with the ass is you can do squats. You can deadlift. You can do a bunch of stuff to keep your ass. You can firm. do those things, but they don't. Okay, especially not in Wisconsin. There's no workout for your tits. Yeah, yeah, bitch press. Yeah, but that's not going to reverse the saggy. Of it helps a lot. It helps a lot. And does you it get really? Them, you can get the, yeah, it absolutely does. And you can get them lifted, of course. You had muscle under the titty, it makes the titty bigger. I've seen it. Oh my god! Like, like not to change the subject. I was driving today, and I was driving past a CrossFit gym, and I looked. It caught my attention because there was a guy outside who was doing those things where you like have a rope tied around you like a toga kind of like like shoulder to to down diagonally and he's like walking through the parking lot dragging what looked like about 200 pounds on like a little sled like across the asphalt and i was like ah oh, good for this guy you know he's getting after it because it was kind of a rainy day and then i see his trainer i'm in traffic and this woman is a good 120 150 feet from me and mm -hmm. her titties are so fucking big and her waist is so fucking small that I almost just went in there and start and just took a shot. It <laughs> just started CrossFit. <laughs> I was I was immediately struck. I, no, fuck the CrossFit. I, I'm going. I'm going. For the, <laughs> I don't care about working out. I'm going to offer this lady some money to be my home trainer. If that's first, I'll hit on her. And if that doesn't seem to be going the way, I'm going to try to purchase her because yeah. <laughs> I have never. I cannot recall seeing a woman more incredibly ridiculously built i mean each titty was i'm an i wish i could show you dimensions they were they were sticking out and they were huge was it as big round. as like my head yes nice. it was like one of your it was like two of your heads and she she had on like tight crossfit like workout gear and her arms were fucking built like 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 Linda Hamilton and Terminator 2 built, which you haven't seen because you're a piece of shit. <laughs> All right. She had she had well defined arms. What's the muscle on the back of the arm? Tricep. Her triceps were like popping. And she she looked like she was a good like five foot seven, like five foot eight, maybe. And she's wearing like yoga pants. And I can see that like her like quads and everything are defined and her ass looks great. But I can't stop staring at her gargantuan fucking titties that are just sticking straight out and big and she's wearing her top is so tight that like it like makes this perfectly defined like curve under the titty and then down to like a tight fucking core i was i i, I it took me a second to <laughs> leave the red light and like somebody honked and i literally went and the guy went <laughs> like he took notice and he didn't honk again and, and 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 we each took about two more seconds before we actually left for the green light i i i'm still thinking about this woman and if i can find out where she lives you should try you should go back say you're interested in crossfit but i'm intimidated by getting right into it with you guys it would really help me if we could do some home training i've got a lot of equipment there uh, some of it gym related, even. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's what you could do. Yeah.
Elliot, you can ask her like, "What do you do? How do you get what, what muscles? This like these? <laughs> what, what muscle is that? Yeah, these, how do you, how do you get all that? How do you get all that titty meat? The <laughs> worst thing that could happen is she beat me up. I'm down. Yeah, I'm down. Like like, like that's not my th- thing or anything. But I, you know, I might I might that, that that if that's as close as I'm gonna get, then I'll take it. You know what I mean? She's so hot that you would let her beat you up. Yeah, she's so hot that I would let her beat me up. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, I, absolutely. She was. A, 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 a perfect specimen. I, I was I, like, like I normally don't like get that turned around when I see a hot woman. I'm like, oh, there's, there's a pretty girl. There's, that's, that's, that's a good looking lady. I was just like, what the fuck are you? <laughs> you people exist out in the wild? She was outrageous. Yeah. But yeah, this this high school giving awards Woody for biggest ass, biggest titties. Oh, I saw that. And it was like, it's funny to make it wasn't, fun of, it wasn't but a it's college literally cheerleading just, team? Am I crazy? No, it's high school. Oh, high it's school cheerleaders, yeah. you're right. It's In like, their prime. It's literally like... <laughs> yeah, as opposed to those worn out college girls. I, I mean, think that they're like ruining, ruining it for the girls, right? Because like, it's a mock award ceremony. It's the yeah. same thing as like, most likely to su- not succeed, but most likely to to you know fart at a funeral or like stupid shit that you'd give out in high school like that's I think what this it is, is one of those things it's, where it's a bunch only... of jokes that the kids come up with i would think I, I i guarantee that like the girls who won these awards are in no way offended they're 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 highly flattered by it just like a guy would be they, they're not feeling objectified are you they're sure feeling praised yeah i'm 100 percent sure like, like, it, I, it's I, a mock award ceremony it's like my understanding is like you know when you're on a sports team and they'll be like giving out jokey awards mm-hmm. Like that's what I think this. And smelliest jockstrap goes to Willie. I've known girls with Tom double Taylor. D's who are otherwise and fit biggest looking. helmet goes to Taylor Merka. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real, we special ordered it. And they're sensitive <laughs> about their giant boobs. Like it's not a it's not a feature that they're happy to have. And sometimes they don't look Bullshit. great naked. Like uh, who are these women you're talking about that, that you my, talk to with enormous titties who don't like them? My neighbor. I, I don't. Your neighbor. Me. How old is she? She was, this is a long time ago, um, probably 31. Was she married? Yes. There you go. She can't show them off anymore, maybe. I, I... Her, her, her titties are no longer of value to her. <laughs> I bet if you asked her, they are. They're absolutely not that's of funny. value to her. That, that's, 100%, that's not just not a joke. It's 100% real. I bet if you asked her husband how he felt about the titties, and he's like, I love them. They go... She goes. Uh, the, but to her, she's like, who needs them? They just get in the way now. You mug them. crawled up on my foot that was decent sized. If you had it the off, biggest, and now I don't know where it is. Biggest booty on your whole cheerleading team, that might not be a quality booty. Um, you're not getting that award if it's not a quality booty. They're not picking Sarah giant fatty fat ass over there to win that award. They're picking the girl with that big old booty over there that everybody wants. That, that is the point of this thing, man. I'm telling you, nobody's offended by this except okay. for the ugly and fat girls and the moms of ugly fat girls who were also probably ugly fat girls. I don't think that they're even, I mean, it's like cheerleading, so you have to be kind of athletic to do it. Like, they do a bunch of spins and shit. Like, it's just, I bet the girls made up these ca- these categories themselves. Like, joking. I've never, I've never known a girl that when you compliment her on her, like, ass or her pussy or her titties i've never once in hundreds of instances had them go oh, how dare you don't you appreciate my my brains it's like yeah yeah that's that, that that's why we're having a conversation here because i like your brains but your t- titties are incredible a hundred answer to that is to go time. you're smart enough to know that i don't <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one but i've never had a girl not be like oh well thank you i'm glad you like them that's the response every fucking time. And they like them too. Every girl I've ever known who had like really big boobs. She's always known she had big boobs. They have, they're her, they, she finds them to be her best feature. She flaunts them. She uses them to her advantage in every aspect of her fucking life. And, she, and while sure, they make her back hurt and her bras are expensive and she has to special order them. Still, she wouldn't trade them in. Some mm-hmm. girls do. Some girls get reductions. Yeah, some girls do when they actually have like. That's the only kind of issues. body modification that should be illegal. <laughs> I agree. They're usually upgrades. Crime reduction. against humanity. The girls who are getting breast reductions don't usually have, you know, the the, the shape and the firmness that make them great. They're like just, Robin Quivers. She had those. She, I'll she, be she the had judge. a breast. 
<laughs> she, Robin <laughs> Quivers had a breast reduction, uh, and and uh, but they grew back. <laughs> <laughs> they grew back. Oh, so they were like, so they were fat titties, and so she basically had fat sucked out, and That's then what... she gained weight again and replenished it. A little bit of both. A little column A, a little column B. Like like even when she was thin in like the early nineties, they were colossal. Mm. Like I, I don't remember what the letter is, but it ain't D or E. It, they, she's got like it's one of those letters you don't hear much. She has J like pluses. 30, yeah, it's like thirty six Fs or something like that. Let's like, Google Robin Quiver's tits, nineteen ninety, and we'll see <laughs> oh, who's right. Oh, I got I got a hot link for you. Uh, don't, don't, don't worry, no need for that. Yeah, they they were just colossal, uh, just just colossal. I, I like some <laughs> big old titties. You watch Trail Sun and Two. I know. I think are you like me yeah. that you hardly miss his videos? You know, when Trail's got something to talk about, you watch what old Trail says. I didn't watch his dinner with Cowboy Cerrone, um, but other than that, I'm pretty caught Disappointing, I thought. But yeah, so um, did you see his I'm on a hunger strike video? No. Jail son and lays it out there. I'd play it for you guys. It's eight minutes long, though. And um, basically, he says, I always thought I was pretty disciplined and, you know, I could lose weight and get back in shape or whatever. But I've been a heavyweight for a while now and I could eat anything I want. I decided to sort of shape up my diet because I don't like the way I'm looking. And I'm thinking about some lower weight classes. And I'm not losing weight. I was like, I don't know what's up. I go to the gym as much as I used to, et cetera. And then it just I'm heavy. So I have decided not to eat. I'm four days in to a water only diet. I don't know how much longer it'll last, but, but it is what it is. He goes a little while longer. Like he went like about a week without food. Mm -hmm. Looks better. Looks yep, better. Yeah. I, there was that guy in the hospital from like years and years ago who weighed like 500, six, or probably like 600 pounds. Uh -huh. And he stayed Scott, in the hospital Scott. for a whole year and just gave him water and like intravenously gave him the, the nutrients he needed, no food. And he lost like 350 pounds over the course of the year. Like didn't die, like just no, no physical food at all. Yeah, you all. don't need food. Um, you need, you need vitamins and minerals, you know, to what's like body. the survival rule, like three minutes without air, three days without water, three weeks days. without food. Oh, it might be weeks. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, it's like a month or so. so it's, it's six weeks is what I've always heard. And it depends Ky on how fat you are with food. Kyle and Taylor can't see this, but on your screen is Chael Sonnen talking about how he's just not losing weight like he wants to. And here he is like a month later. This is him. I, I think he looks better. I, I, I I'm can sure see he does. Like he probably lost a good 12, 15 pounds. Neck and chin, and, and he's just he's just a sharper looking guy. Yeah, like yeah. I, there's this. nothing wrong with that. Like, like, um, you know, I, I, I've lost extreme amounts of weight by doing that before. Like, like, if, if you just don't eat for four days, and and you don't have to go completely no food. You can eat like a little something, like literally like a bite. A bite is all you really need. Like, like hunger goes that. away. I just don't want to lose any muscle. Yeah, you're a young man. You'll be all right. I mean, Thank you.